All right, everybody. All right. I, I am here with Randy O, uh, also known as Randy Roberg from the band Odin, from the band Lost Boys. He's an amazing part of Sunset Strip history. I'm very thankful to have him here today. And as it turns out, as we were just talking, uh, talking, we were rehearsed in some of the same uh, rooms and knew some of the same people on the scene. And I, man, I am just so thankful to have you here today. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm surprised there's people out there that still want to interview me. Dude, <laughs> it, it, here's here's what's here's, here's how the universe you know works. You know what, what a trip is? I'm sorry to interrupt. Is in like the last month. So like last week I did an interview, like a podcast, and then and then just uh, like in the last few days, Jake from the whiskey who does all the bookings. He's, he wants Odin to play in April. So it's just like, I'm like, people still want us to play and still want to interview me. I mean, I, it, it just blows my mind. It, it's, I mean, it it's, really it's does. awesome. Great. Yeah. It's a trip. It, it's the, awesome, the metal thing must still be happening a little bit. It, it's, it, you know, I started this channel and, you know, I do all kinds of different things and I moved to Tennessee in 94. So you know, I got really? it. I lived. You I lived in Nashville for thirty years. Oh my goodness! Really? Yes. Yes. So are you still in Nashville then? I am now in Tampa. Oh, okay. So, oh, so, all right, South. All right. Yeah, I just just moved to Tampa, but I was in Nashville for thirty years, and you know, it's just it's just one of those things. And I just learned that you were in Tennessee and I was like, oh man, I should have like connected with this guy, but I had I had no idea, you know? Uh, well I've only been here, I'm going on my fourth year. And I'm like an hour south of Nashville. I'm gonna put yeah. called Shelbyville. Yeah. So out in the country on a farm. That's awesome. That is awesome. Away from the rat race. Yes, yes, man. I, I that's another thing that I talk about on my channel. People want to hear about the Sunset Strip and what it was like. But it's also a fact of redemption, figuring yeah. out the important things in life and and finding peace because yeah. we, we both know it. There was no peace out there. No. Well, that's one thing in my life. I've definitely found peace and joy, happiness. I'm in a really good place in my life, especially when you see all the stuff that's happened to all the people and all the bands from the sun Sunset Strip, all the people that I knew, you know. Uh, just tormented by their success or their their addictions or their, you know, just still even chasing it to try to make a dime. And like, you know, my I don't know if you know, but my cousin is the bass player for Warren. Okay. So, I mean, I really saw, I, I, I don't know, Jerry Dixon. Yep, and, um, yep. I see, I, I've seen like what that band has gone through. I mean, not, not, not to say that they're not doing well now, but it's still, for him, it's just such a struggle and a battle and, you know, it's hard to find happiness, you know, do, doing that. So yeah. it's a grind. Yeah. It's, it's a grind. And that's what people yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of letting people know on this channel that, you know, the, the rock star myth it is a myth. And the ultimately yeah. you, you, if you, you know, if you do lucky to make it like say warrant, you're now yeah. having to go play these shows and man, by the time you split up all the money with the buses and all the expenses involved, man, you're not you're not walking away with you know a ton of money at the end of the weekend. And um, you know, it's eye opening for people to to hear this information. Well, yeah, I'm not. I don't. Yeah, I don't know anything about all the money part, but I know that it's it's tough for some people to just get out and do it, even though they're out doing it. And I know there's a lot of people that still really enjoy watching it. I actually went. Uh, about a month ago, I went and saw Sean, the drummer from Odin. He's he's now the drummer for L.A. Guns. Mm -hmm. So I went and checked that out, you know, in just a small little club. And, you know, people, you know, three, four hundred people are showing up and digging it. And um, and I never really was like an L.A. Guns fan, but they're actually a really good band. You yeah. know, they're really tight. Uh, kind of blew my mind. And then I think it was last year I went and saw Jeff who's now he well he has been an armored saint for yeah. 40 years or whatever 
yeah play and they, they blew my mind but what tripped me out is they they were opening for wasp which odin opened for wow. wasp many times in wow. la i mean i actually lived, i lived with chris holmes for a couple of years and have yes. a lot of stories about that and we were actually very close you know i lived in la crescenta he lived in la Cunada, and we were you know in pasadena is where van halen came from so very close to that whole scene and um but 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 it was just a trip to see wasp because i don't i don't really go out and see bands a lot and so i i'm kind of not hip to really what's happening but when they came on the sound was so unbelievable you know what i mean i was like sitting there going it just sounds so good like it doesn't seem real you know yeah and i was with my I was with my friend uh jeremy who's the guitar player for lit you pro you probably yeah yep. band yep it was razzle right yeah razzle and actually if you talk to jeremy he'll tell you one of the reasons that he does what he does is because of odin you know he said wow. without odin there, there would be no lit you know and, wow. and he's actually come and, come and played with us on stage before a couple of times and had, had us play uh his club down there and well he had a club down in at orange county called the slide bar so Odin had played there a couple of times and um, but they used backing tracks, you know, and he was telling me like Jeremy's hip to what's happening because they're still and I just it just kind of blew my mind like that bands do that. You know, I was thinking like, you know, Millie Vanilli, like I remember yeah. that was back in the day, like War Warrant was like number two on the billboards and Mil Millie Vanilli was number one, you know, yeah. and it was just like once people knew that they drop it anyways i just so i don't know what i was getting at except it was cool to see bands and people are out there still doing it so there is some kind of must be some kind of metal scene happening or whatever you call it hard rock metal you know yeah. glam i don't know what people call it but yeah. but it's cool you know but they're grinding i mean like you see the bus they're in or their van yeah. they're in and you look tired and yeah no thank you no yeah. thanks yeah yeah i did that for many years and I toured with Country Acts, and you know, oh, okay. I, did, I did a I did a video uh, called uh, "Broke on the Road," and it's explaining <laughs> that I'm playing, and there's literally ten thousand people in the audience, and I'm making three hundred dollars. So well, it, yeah, I mean that's one. Thing, I'm sorry. That yeah. that's one thing I had said to Jeff Duncan is um. You know, and I, I don't I hope this doesn't come across like I'm bagging bagging him. But like he showed me a video, you know, once and there was like 30,000 people in, in Germany, you know, and I know that he struggles a little bit. And I'm thinking, well, you guys must have got a dollar a person. You know, that's 30 yeah. grand, you know, yeah. and not even close. You know, wow. they so they travel all the way across this, you know, the ocean. And, yeah. You know, they play these. And they're not, you know, they're barely, like you said, they're barely making any money, but they have that appearance of, you know, we're rock yeah. stars, you know, yeah. it's like, you can have it, man. Yeah, it, it's, it's not, <laughs> and uh, people, and, and that's part of this channel is kind of waking people up and people are engaging with it because the ones that um, didn't pursue a career in music are going, man, thank God I didn't do that. <laughs> yeah. Because it's well, tough. Well, I mean, I don't the, the the one thing too is like so back in the day and like in the 80s you you would you know you you know you'd get a you'd get a band you get a group of guys usually you would rehearse in a garage or you know or or you would have a rehearsal studio if you could afford it and you'd work your ass off you'd practice every single day right you practice 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 and your dream was to be like I said, in the decline of the civilization, I wanted to be the next Robert Plant. I wanted to be Jim Morrison. And why wouldn't I want to be that? I wanted yeah. to be that big. Yeah. Now, you know, sure, I was delusional, but why not think that way? But then then what you would have to do is you'd have to get gigs. So you'd play everybody's party yeah. if you could get it. You know, you'd play everybody's backyard party. And then if you could get in the Troubadour or the Whiskey or the you know or the uh not the rainbow but the roxy or or any of those clubs down there you know opening to try to build your following you know then you would do that but you'd have to go out as you know you hear it a million times flyer 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 get out on the streets hand your flyer out try to you know talk to every girl that you possibly could you know to get them to go to your show you yeah. know and charm them and yeah. sell them on your band and then and then 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 get your gig, you know, and then and work your way up the ladder. And, yeah. and you know, and you, so you really were marketing by, you know, 
being on the streets and hustling and and you know pound pay, pay, you know pounding the pavement so to speak and if you didn't then you then, then you wouldn't get there yeah. you know and 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 Odin was like right there with I mean the thing about Odin what people don't realize is like that don't take no for an answer I don't know if I'm if I should keep going or I'm jumping all over you but like that no, don't no, take no for an answer. Yeah. We we were like we were like 16 17 18 years old you know and and the and the thing about it it is is that there was like two waves of like like two waves of like uh bands that kind of came through and so we were like teenagers when like motley wasp uh you know great white which uh they were a different name uh great white um uh steeler with you know steeler like this this group of bands that kind of like we were going to like i remember going and seeing rat for instance at the troubadour wow. and just like you know, just completely, you know, them all coming out, they look so huge and they had all those like, like fashion clothes on and just going like, you know, just, it was so amazing and so intimate and those clubs and their sound and being, you know, two inches away from Warren, just shredding and just going, and these guys are rock stars before, before they made it, you know what yeah. I mean? They were getting close to the Atlantic. They may have had their Atlantic deal, but very, very early, very, very early on. And, um, you know, so 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 basically that wave, I got to stay on track here, that wave. Of, they, so they kind of went through, but kind of towards the tail end of that first group, Wasp was getting popular and Wasp kind of Chris Holmes, who I ended up living with eventually, who was from from La Cunata, kind of took us under his wing and wow. got us on that blood drive gig. Wow. And kind of we had been in a way and, and working hard. And we got once we got on that that blood drive we were like the opening slot on a saturday night it kind of helped us take off in that little that world you know and we and we and then kind of like after that it seemed like we we started headlining and and i mean as as you know odin and the, like as far as in the la area we were we were massive yeah and um, i mean we were really massive and um and i mean it was a shame that I don't want to jump too far down the road, but I mean, it was a shame that we didn't get a record deal. And there's, you know, there's a lot of reasons for that, you know, whether it was, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, like Odin, Odin, oh, how do I say this? Odin, ha, I think we had bad management. You know, I don't know if our songs, I mean, you know, we're ready for, for the big time. I mean, we had our own little vibe. We kind of got, you know, twist and churn with our music because we were just kind of following what was happening in the beginning. Yeah. We were doing kind of doing our own thing. Like if you listen to Don't Take No, and even the way we we started end up looking because like in the beginning we were with Metallica, you know, in San Francisco and like Armored Saint, and we were like a heavy metal Black Sabbath kind yeah. of band. But but we we just we were young kids and we just we wanted to make it, so we just kept kind of following the trend, you know. Yeah, and yeah. I think that. That that kind of, I think it screwed us in the end. You know, needless to say, you know my story, which is, you know, I was with Odin for a while. We put that record out. We did some touring with Alcatraz with Steve Vai. You know, we put we played some. You know, we we played around a lot. You know, um, but then I had Vicky Hamilton come into my life. You know, and I'm I'm jumping you know forward, and Vicky yeah. Hamilton, as you know, was Guns and Roses manager, and yeah. you know Striper and Poison and Motley Crue, and and um you know she just kept telling me I was a rock star. You know, I mean literally, she was. I'd go to her house, and she was just like, "You are a rock star." You know, you know what I mean. And then another thing to jump back, if you and like people, if you jump back, like we were 82, 83, so we were around before that second wave, which the Guns and Roses, the Poisons, yeah. That kind of all those kind of bands so we were before them so like you know so like i was doing my trip before axel rose was doing his trip i don't know no, who axel I, rose is. They i was gonna the, say they that now people will tell you know there, there's so many haters out there but people you know he was at my shows you know he would wow. be at the odin show he was watching what i was doing now i mean now axel blows me away in singing i'd never say he doesn't and he's a, a great entertainer and their songs are freaking remarkable and that appetite for just uh whatever the appetite record was probably one of the greatest rock and roll records of all time so i'm not going to deny that but i was there before them you know and then if you look at to like where i kind of got my trip from well 
you know, I love Jim Morrison, but, but we, I was ripping off Richard Black from Shark Island. I don't know if you ever heard of Richard Black from Shark Island, but, yes. but I, I would go to his shows and I was mesmerized by him and I would watch him and, and, you know, he was, did you ever see him? You ever see Shark Island? I, I, I think I did, but I know uh, my bass player, I don't know if you knew him, Greg Babuccio. But he he told yeah, I think I do. he he said, "Dude, Axel just ripped off uh, Shark Island." He goes, "No, totally." But but he, there's no doubt that he was watching Richard. I know for sure he was. But my the girl, so I used to date this girl Karen Johnson, and her sister was named Linda Johnson, and she was friends with them, and she turned me on to them, and I was you know I was uh, I was trying to find my way, you know. Yeah, watch you know as much Morrison as I can, and of course Robert Plant, and um and I you know tried to mimic them and be like them and look like Robert Plant and who didn't everybody did yeah. wished I could sing like, them. but um but I mean so Richard Black was a big influence to me and I never got to meet him I I see him now playing and um I mean a lot of people should give him credit and I kind of yeah. was doing some research and it looks like Axel did at some point I think he may have even had Richard sing with him. But Richard was phenomenal. I thought they should be much bigger. But um, and anyway, so then I, I kind of, you know, I got hooked up with Vicki Hamilton. And um, and it was a trip because, you know, the next thing I know, you know, now we're into the later 80s. We're like into 88, you know, so yeah. I missed a lot of stuff. Into 88, um, I I basically had songs that I had been saving, you know, and, and uh you know, and, and, and then a couple that me and Jeff have wrote, but I kind of like just kind of putting them in my back pocket for my band. And 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 Jimmy Tavis, who ended up playing with Lita Ford and yep. writing some good, good songs, he 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 had joined Odin, so he was uh, you know in my ear too. Okay. And so so it was just, you know because he was the same way. He was trying to get me into his brother's band Lash. Okay. So so, so to lose focus. So then so basically. So we we put this band together and within no time, you know, Vicky got assigned to Atlantic Records. We had multiple offers and wow. for a substantial amount of money. And I'd been, you know, 10, I'd worked for almost 10 years and never had a pot to piss in. Yeah. So, you know, here I am, almost a $300,000 record deal, a couple hundred wow. thousand dollar publishing deal. Now you're talking about a half a million dollars in 1988. That's a wow. lot of money for someone who's yeah. never had a pity. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, so I, you know, so basically not that anything really came of it, as you know, you know, I, I made that record. I, the producer, I, I, from day one, I was, it was a nightmare for me. He, he wasn't musical at all. And I really needed somebody musical to be with me to help guide uh -huh. me. So that, you know, the sound of it's pretty cool, but I didn't really have anybody, you know, pushing me and producing me as far as I was concerned. Uh -huh. And, um, and, um, you know, I ended up bringing, you know, Jeff ended up coming in from Odin and playing like the leads and doing some backing vocals. You know, the record gets released. And pretty much I remember going into Atlantic Records. They have like, uh, you know, once your record's done, you, you there's people that are going to promote you. And, you know, you yeah. probably know yeah. the terminology more than me, but you kind of go into a room. There's some of the big wigs are there. You listen to your record. And at the end of that, only said this a couple times they told me that like well we we like the music we think that there's you know this we think there's some good songs here but we, we don't like your vocals you know and and not all of them yeah we don't we don't like your vocals and it's not all of it but they go what we want to do is we want to get kip winger's brother the winger brothers and we want them to come into the studio with you and we want them to go some vocals for you what? and, and kind of re kind of redo your vocals and i looked at them and at that time, I, I mean, looking back now, being the me, who I am today, I yeah. probably should have listened to him. But I was so I thought I thought I was the shit. Of course yeah. I did. Yeah. I just told him, fuck you. I mean, straight yeah. out, I just said, you, man, this uh, is this, you know, there, I couldn't stand winger. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to say it just wasn't my thing. Yeah. I know they're successful and love them. And but that yeah. just wasn't my thing. And and um and um. And and so the, after that, guess what? They that released the record. I think it got played on Headbangers Ball at like you know four in the morning, yeah. and that was it. I heard from them again. You know what I mean? Wow. I took my money and I ran. Yeah. And, um, and I pretty much after that, I kind of tried, 
you know, that, that studio that you're talking about, yeah. there was a like kind of the end of the Lost Boys thing. I kind of like, actually CBS was there a lot. There's a guy from CBS because that grunge thing came in and I had a voice that could have probably, you know, done, done the sound guard yeah. and that stone tip. I had really, that really kind of where I was at. But I, I just couldn't grasp that either. I'm like, I'm a heavy metal dude. And they were like, well, let's go record all these songs. You got 30 songs. We're going to go down. And, and I pretty much told them, I remember telling the guys in the band, I said, I'll do it under one condition. We have to change the name of Lost Boys. And we have to just start over. And they're like, no way, man. Lost Boys got a name. I just And after that, like the switch just turned off for me. And I was like, you know what? I'm done with music. Wow. I am done with I'm going to take what I have. And I literally just disappeared and, you know, just disappeared. And, um, you know, and then I had some other options along the way and, and um, I just got on with my life, you know, yeah. and yeah. Um, I don't know if we want to get into that part of it, but I pretty much just got on with, with my life and, and move forward. Yeah. I, 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 you know, I did some research, you know, for this interview and, um, okay. it, it, and, you know, and like you were mentioning before, we used to rehearse in the same rehearsal studio. We both had the same sound guy, Jerry. And I yeah, knew it was great. I, and I knew he was dating Vicky, Vicky Hamilton. So yeah. and, and I I actually saw you guys rehearse a few times. I would come kind of sneak in and I would go in that little control room that they had there. Yeah. Uh, and, and I would wait, you know, for you guys to finish. But I would listen. I go, man, these guys got a really cool vibe. Like you did have that Jim yeah. Morrison kind of kind of vibe yeah. mixed in with this. And I was like, man, these guys are really good. And then when I went back and I listened to the song that that played on Heavy uh, Headbangers Ball, I said, man, yeah. this guy's pipes were just blowing Axl Rose's pipes out of the door I'm thinking and, and the whole time you know we were we were we went through so many singers it was ridiculous we couldn't find any and I was like man I should have just tried that to was hard. I should have tried to just get in your band you know but but the thing yeah. was you just you know everybody's like why we didn't meet back then is because if you were in your band you were in your band and everybody was kind of this is our band and we're against you and you're against. So there was, oh, we were, no, it was like gangs. It, was, it literally was like gangs. Yeah. I mean, we were all packed up and everything, you know, we, yeah. we were, we, you know, that the original lost boys, I really felt like we were a gang. Like we, you know, we, and we, you know, we would fight, we would just like, we would die for each other. And, yeah. and that, that was pretty cool because you spent so many times. Like I remember like lost boys, you remember LP sounds, Yes. Did you remember that in North Hollywood? Yeah. So, I mean, I lit, I, I ran that studio. I lived in that little, you know, probably a 10 by 10 room with five guys. Wow. You know what I mean? And, and, yeah. and, 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 and rehearsing and running the studio before I got signed to it, to Atlantic with Lost Boys and Bang Tango was working out of there. World War Three. I mean, probably so many signed bands that rat would come in there. I mean, I could just keep going, but I mean, living in there, with you know the girls coming in there you yeah. know everything happening in one room with five guys you could only yeah. imagine yeah. and it all happened in there, you know yeah. so so you you were close you were yeah. really really close and um and you stayed close and you needed each other to to live you needed you know one guy might get food from a girl and bring it to yeah. you know what i mean you're yeah. starving and uh, you know what i mean and and just any help that you could get and that's just how it works so you were very close and um you did everything together and and um and and, it, and and it's it's great memories i'll never i'll never forget it you know I've, yeah. I've forgotten probably more than i'll you know ever remember unfortunately yeah. it's you know but it probably is good too that i've forgotten a lot of things because i'll have people tell me stories and i'll just be like i really did that i i'm so sorry yeah you know that, that, <laughs> you I, know I, what i mean it, sometimes i'll i'll wake up in the morning and I'll and I'll have some dream where I'm back in the band house, and it's like so real. Do you ever have those moments? Oh yeah, boy, of course, yeah, of course. I just try to let it go. Yeah, yeah I just try to, you know, from the but, um, from touring and stuff like that. When I when I got off the road the last time, and it was a really crazy, like a hundred and you know fifty dates a year, and, and a crazy grind. 
And man, for a long time after that, I was having nightmares because, you know, you'd have the aggressive tour manager and all this crazy yeah. stuff going on. And you just, it takes you a while to, to just come down from all that, you know? I mean, I just, I'm sure you can relate to it. I, I remember from the very beginning of touring, I was always uncomfortable. I never, I was never comfortable being on a Winnebago. We didn't have like a Winnebago, you know, you'd be with all the guys and you never had your own space. And, you know, and then if you smoked weed or did drugs, you run out of that. And so now you're stressing about that. So everybody's fighting because there's no weed, you know, or <laughs> whatever you no beer. So as soon yeah. as you get to the place, you're like looking for that, and that's your number one priority, yeah. you know. And then it's just it just was uncomfortable. And yeah. then you know, it just I didn't like it. So yeah. I, I I think I was like I tell people I really think I was spared by God. Uh, by not becoming a huge rock star because I don't, I mean, I overdosed multiple times just being not a rock star. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm lucky to be alive. So I feel like if I would have, if that would have happened for me, I wouldn't have the life that I have today, which is a wonderful life. You know, I've been married 35 years. I've got a 30 year old daughter. I'm a grandpa wow. and my life is beautiful. Yeah. And, and um, I have to pinch myself, you know, because like we were talking, like, like, look at Janie Lane. Look at the torment that he has. And I always bring them up because I'm close to them because my cousin's in the band. Like, he could never find happiness. Even, yeah. I, you know, I was around them from the, they used to open for Odin, let's just put it that way, to, to where I watched them become successful. But here he is, this massive rock star. And I know you know it happens to the best of them. And they're addicted to alcohol or drugs. And, I'm, you know, I've had my problems. And, uh, so I'm not saying I'm better than anybody, but then they just never find happiness. And then and then they and then they lose everything and then they get an opportunity like with him to to kind of make it again and to have a good living. You know, say yeah. he gets a hundred grand from his music and can make money on merch and control. And they're not content. They just never can find contentment because of of the demons. And, I, you know what I mean? So I'm just yeah. I don't know really what I was getting at, except that I'm just grateful that. I, it turned out the way it did for me. And I'm sure we all fantasize about, you know, playing the LA Coliseum to a hundred thousand people and, you know, you know, whatever, yeah. but it's you know, not all. I mean, I still see, Vin me. no, I mean, I see Vince Neal because he's, he's here in Franklin and, and uh, my friend Jeremy's a good friend with him. And I, and I see him and I'm just kind of like, what's up, dude. You know I mean? Like, you're a freaking huge rock star. What's going on with you? You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm not going to get into it, but it's like, he's a perfect example. You know, it's like, is he happy? I mean, yeah. is he really happy? I don't know if he is. He doesn't look happy to me. No. You know, he's just constantly go, 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 go. You oh, know, to man. me, that's a happy way of life. Yeah. You know, and then there's all kinds of stories with stuff that's happening with him up here where, you know, it's just, it just seems crazy to me, but I don't, I, you know, I won't get into that. I don't want to start Talking that's about that's about why <laughs> that's why your story is so great because it is a story of redemption and figuring sure. out what life is all about and that's that's what I talk about on this channel man it's not all uh you know Lamborghinis and chicks in bikinis and and party supplies and booze once you realize that stuff is all nonsense and get to the fact of having well, a yeah. life, having a family, you know, having a nice yeah. roof over your head. That's that's what it's all about. You no, know, for sure. You no, know, for sure. Yeah. Now, now I have to ask you this because when okay. I read, you know, I read read some stuff. Now you were working at a builder's emporium in Montrose, California, when you answered the ad for Odin, right? Yeah. So I yeah. So basically, I was in a. I was in a couple of bands. So, I mean, this is high school. So I was in a, not that I finished high school, but I was in a couple of bands be before Odin. And my brother Patrick took me to a club called, I think it was Pookie's. And uh, my brother Patrick ended up, he was in Lost Boys with me. So he was, he was at continuation school with Jeff Duncan. And his band Odin was playing Pookie's in Pasadena. It's a club there. I don't know if you know so he took me there, took me there, you know, and I, so I had seen them with their original singer art and I was blown away by them. They're, you know, right. Sabbath, 
big time just sounded like Sabbath, you know, yeah. but kind of a progressive, just like Odin sounds. So then, so then it wasn't too long after that, my brother said that they're looking for a singer and there was an ad. And so I, so um, I remember I went, I went down and auditioned and I wasn't that great of a singer, you know, I mean, I had my trip, but I still had, didn't really have Randy O together. Yeah. So I went down, I sang for them and, you know, they, you know, they were cool to me and be kind of out the door. I went, you know, their, their little studio down there in Glendale that they had. And then I was working at Builders, you know, and I was kept calling them, you know, I'd ask them like, I'd call, hey, man, how's it going? Do I, you know, I got a chance and they were they were trying to get this singer who was in a cover band, this Hawaiian guy that was kind of a known guy who was a was a real singer, really. You know, he was actually a real singer, could sing covers because that's something that we did back in the day. We sang covers. Yeah. You had to know a bunch of songs, right, to, to make money. Yeah. Yeah. People don't do that anymore. But anyway, so I kept calling and I'd have people from Builders Call and, you know, and they would say, yeah, we're still looking for singers. We're still looking for singers. And then eventually what happened is out of nowhere, they called me up and I had, I had had my, you know, I think one of the reasons was, is I had my PA had certainly Serwin Vega V35 Bs, yeah. Yamaha P2201 MQ802 Yamaha mixing board with my space echo, you know? Wow. So I like, I could go to parties and they could use my yeah. PA system kind <laughs> of, you know, I had, I had that all together. So they came and I remember Brad saying, who was one who was one of the original guitar players and and Odin brought me down there we set my stuff up and it, and pretty much at that point it was on and I was in the band wow. and we just we just went we just went from there yeah now, we're that, that that's an incredible Brad, story yeah. and and Brad Parker was the first guitar player in Metallica yeah well yeah he was in Metallica and Motley Crue wow so he so we thought you know he was in Metallica and and he was the guy in Motley Crue and the Dirt, that guy. That was that's uh -huh. him. So that's so he, the guy who could but, really but, play. He was a good player, right? He, well, he, he, he was, but he wasn't. So he was like taking lessons from Randy Rhodes. I'd listen to these Randy Road cassette tapes of him giving Brad lessons back then. I mean, well, Randy was yeah. I think he was still alive, but he had passed at some point when I was in Odin. And, you know, but then it was like, well, whatever. But then afterwards, then it was a big deal, you know, after yeah. that Aussie record. But he he was good, but he was always kind of out of tune a little bit. It was uh, like this weird. So we just we could never even on our first like that first EP that we did caution. It was just he just wasn't there. So yeah. we ended up ended up getting rid of him and then, you know, starting our four piece and um and then you know the the rest is history you know with yeah. that now so the when you did decline and you know, first of all yeah. I, I have to ask you were roommates with chris holmes what yeah. what kind of squalor are we talking about was was the place clean was it destroyed was this so actually so chris so he was he was a rock star at the time we not that he was getting any rock star money from black Blackie would come over a lot, but we lived in a little apartment in La Crescenta. He was into fish. You know, he had a nice fish aquarium. Didn't have a car. I don't think he had a driver's license. And at the time, he, he was just getting divorced. So his wife actually had the car. But I mean, back then, and I'm not proud of it, we were smoking a lot of Coke. So we were freebasing wow. a lot. It was very popular wow. back then. So we were like, that was kind of our life. You know, we were always kind of working to get some smoke coke you know and yeah. i and i mean and it, thinking back it was horrible but it also was fun you know yeah and um so we, so we had this dealer guy and i mean in the couple of years it just seemed that it seemed like it went on we were just constantly in this you know he was either playing a gig going on tour coming back you know or leaving you know for interviews or press and then and then basically so to the decline because i know that's what we want to get at is he so he had been gone for like three days when he did his sh his shoot, because we both were going to be in it and we both had shooting dates and he had come home, you know, guarantee of doing all the stuff that everybody did back then. Yeah. And, um, and he had he had those three empty. He had three bottles, those three vodka bottles that he he'll still say. I see him on TV saying that, oh, no, that was real vodka. Well, those those 100 percent were not real vodka. God strike me dead. Shoot me in the head. I filled those bottles up with water yeah. and I sent him off with those three 
bottles of vodka. So he can say whatever he wants. I actually talked to him like a year ago because he had had cancer and actually made a donation to him. But he'll still say that he did. And it's not true. And, yeah. and he and uh, and I'm, I wouldn't make this up. There's no reason for me to make it up. So I filled those bottles up for him. He went off. He did his stuff, you know, and then I think the following day or, you know, within the next couple of days, I did my shoot with her you know, up, up at, up, up at that house in like the Hollywood Hills or something. Yeah. It, but it, I mean, all, I love Chris Holmes. He was very close to, to me. He, for some reason, he, I think he liked me the most out of the band. We, we, you know, we, we kind of like worked on some songs here and there. And um, I think later on, I mean, he had started a band um, like after Wa B Buster Savage. It was kind of be before Wasp. And um, and then I think afterwards, uh, he we kind of were messing around at SIR Studios, like maybe we were going to do something. But it just I was like kind of past all that. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? I, I was kind of like my head was getting clear and I just yeah. he was still kind of in the same place. You know, I think he was tweaking and I just I yeah. couldn't I just couldn't grasp onto it at all, yeah. you know. Yeah. And then and um, and but anyways, all I want to leave that on a positive note because i love chris yeah chris helped odin a lot and um and um he definitely helped me a lot when i had nowhere to go and and i was trying to make it he let me live with them yeah. helped me actually got me some work at you know doing some construction work and uh and um you know he's a he's a wonderful person you know he really yeah. is a wonderful yeah. person. he's just been through a lot man yeah, yeah. he's just hard you know he's been through a lot yeah what an, what an incredible story. Now, I, I have to ask you about Bill okay. Gazzari. Bill Gazzari, because uh, he's an iconic figure of the Sunset yeah. Strip. You know, I, I played Gazzari's a couple times, but by the time I played it, was, it was like 1990. So I don't, oh, even think, I don't even think Bill was really kind of there a whole lot at that time. No. But, but well, like... You guys got paid. Bill Gazzari would would take. Yeah, oh, yeah. He, he paid us. He, well, I mean, he paid us a lot. I mean, we were we were like our last time we played there. I think we sold it out three nights. Wow. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I mean, th when you're making him that kind of money, you know, he's going to take care of you. But he, I mean, he always liked. He, well, for one, he liked liked the musicians that were packing his club, and he was cool to everybody. You know, he would always, you know, he for sure he'd always take care of me. And the thing about Bill Gazzari's and that little click there is they're all pretty much old gangsters. Yeah. And my grandpa was a gangster. He was his name was Eddie Dragna. And there's wow. a book about him called The Last Mafiosa about Jack Dragna. And you, you can read about it. So wow. he knew he, he knew that part of my family. Not that I was, uh, but I would but I, he was my grandpa. So that he knew them. He knew their story. So I mean, it's like, you know the people at the rainbow, like you'll hear people say, yep. I mean, they would feed me. They took care of you. The whole group of people, they just kind of knew who was, who was feeding them and they were feeding you. But Bill, Bill was cool. You, you know, you saw him in the, in the video, it's kind of corny or whatever, Odin, 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 but he always had our backs. We always had good shows there. You know, that's where Axel would come and watch us. I remember Axel coming wow. and watching us stand Remember the first time that I, I like met Axel officially, he came up to me and I'm like six foot three. So I'm much bigger than him. Yeah. You know, and I didn't know like when he was coming there. I, like, I almost thought like he wanted to fight me, you know, because he didn't really say anything. And he just showed up in the backstage area and he just kind of had this look to me like, you know, I, I don't know. I just so I just kind of walked up to him and I remember going, what's up, William? You know, what's up, William? Like, like, like you, you want some of this fool? You know, wow. back then, you know, just, yeah, yeah. That's how it was, and he just, he really didn't say anything. And then the next thing I remember, we started our show, and he was literally right up front, right there watching the band jam. You know, wow. like everybody else was. Wow. But, yeah. Was so he, Bill was cool was he known as he was known as Axel at that time? Well, he was back, no, he was definitely Axel and with Vicky because Vicky was there too. Because uh, Vicky wanted me to be Odin. So Vicky yeah. was always chasing me around to, to to get my to get my you know band going and to get me a record deal. Yeah. So that might have been like the very end of me being an Odin. Yeah. But um but that's that, yeah, that's incredible, that man. That is, that is absolutely yeah. incredible. This is what people well, the thing, hear. Well, yeah, the thing that people don't realize is like, 
all, I mean, you were there. You you just can't even imagine how many people would be on the sunset sunset strip, excuse me, and how many people wanted to be rock stars and how many girls wanted to get laid. So, I mean, you just go down there and if you were in a big band, you could have any girl you want, literally. I mean, and I'm not proud of it, but you yeah. could. And yeah. especially, me. So, I mean, it was just like, it was ridiculous how, how that, like it was a time that you just can't even imagine it or make yeah. it up. It was just like a, it was like a dream world, you know? Yeah. And then yeah. you'd have, you know what I mean? Like all these girls in mini skirts and fishnet stockings and crotchless panties. And you just like, it was just out in the open nowadays. You, you would, I mean, that would be, I don't know. It wouldn't even be acceptable. It'd probably be, I don't even know what they would call it or what people would think of it. You know, we were probably yeah. horrible, evil people. But it was, you know, and it would be from Gazzari's all the way down to the to whiskey. the whiskey. And it was just packed. Every bar was packed. Every, you know, it was just on. Yeah. And um, and again, like you said, each band was their own gang. And they ever, you know, the one band would walk by that'd be flipping you off, throwing yeah. your flyers, dancing. Throwing your flyers. Know. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it just and it and it was just a way of life. It was just yeah. a complete way of life. And if and if and if you were popular, popular, you thought you owned the place, you know. But but it was good times. I'm glad I made it out of that. And um, yeah. it'll. I don't think it'll ever happen again. I think that yeah. you know, there's been time periods where like the Pat Rack, you know, and then there was like, you know, with with Sinatra and all those kind of groups of people that I think were down in that area. Yeah like the spiritual thing that was happening where people were writing songs. And I think also like in the seventies it happened with like bands, you know, going through the whiskey in that era, another spiritual thing. It's happened in England. It's happened in Nashville. Like it kind of moves around. And then these like magical things happen where these bands come out and make great music. And then it, it goes away. Seattle, it happened. Right. So yep. I don't know if it'll ever happen again, but, there's like these scenes that happen and I was definitely part of it. I was there in the beginning. I mean, I was even there. I remember going when I was a, like 12 or 13 years old, had no idea that I was going to be a singer or, or into music. And this friend of my mom's took me and my brother to the Starwood and he knew what was going on. He was an older guy. He took us there and there was this band snow that played. Well, Randy Rhodes was the guitar player for snow. I'm pretty uh -huh. sure. And I remember seeing that and I love music, love Sabbath. And I was just like, this is so unbelievable. And you got to go. You, no, you, no, 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 you have no, to, I, 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 no. And it was just so unbelievable. And I almost was thinking like, is this Eddie Van Halen? Because I think they're like, like it was just I couldn't put it together because yeah, I yeah. didn't know. Yeah. Um, but 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 I saw so that's how far back I go. So I got to I got to check out the Starwood. So. Definitely was around for all of that. I saw all of it. I mean, I, I I have many more stories of, you know, things that have happened, but, you know, I don't know how far you or how deep you want to get into it. You Man, know? I'm, I'm, I'm willing to go as, as deep as you want. And, and, you know, I, it's just, it's fascinating, man. I think people are finally starting to realize how historic and, and I don't know if, have you seen the new movie, um it's called nothing but a good time have you seen that yet did it just come out it just did that came, just come out it just came well, I, out. I was gonna watch and it you're in it you're in it i am oh i saw yes. my ass i go i like i saw like a trailer and i'm going that's my ass those that's i'm like they took my ass but they didn't put me in the movie but i am in it no you are in it and let me tell you something oh, really this, this is something that i took offense to because one I knew I was going to interview yeah, you. You're you look a, like an idiot. You're you're a friend of Roger Carter, so you're a friend of mine. Yeah. And yeah. I'm seeing Stevie Rochelle, and I know you know who that is, right? I just talked to him. Yeah. He says on there, yeah. he says, "Well, Randy O uh, didn't make it famous, and he's still here." You know, in response to what you said in the film. And I'm thinking, man, that's not really necessary to take pot shots. We're we're all lucky to be here. We, none of us really. What does he mean? I did. Well, what, when he said, it's like, did he make it? I guarantee you, I got way more hundred dollar bills in my pocket than he'll ever have. Guarantee. I mean, I'm not going to get into that. But as far as making it, 
you know, that tough came in after Odin and I actually talked to him. I had never talked to him for like 10 minutes and we, and then uh, something had come up because I wanted to talk to him about a licensing on, on, on my record, but it, whatever, I'm surprised he's going to say stuff like that. And as far as like, it, like, uh, to make, when you're talking about redemption, yeah, the one that's... thing that I would want to, I guess, beat myself with is like, so that whole jacuzzi scene, you know, pe people have to realize like, so I'm probably 20 years old in my 20s. Yeah. I'm drunk and and um, I'm and I'm full of testosterone and I'm dumb. You know what I mean? I'm a dumb, yeah. dumb kid, really. That's trying to make it that thinks honestly believes just like anybody that's trying to make it that I'm going to be as big as Robert Plant. Yeah. And you why wouldn't to. I think that like we talked about? Yeah, yeah Morrison, because that's what I, I was striving for that. I had the, that's what got me to that point. That's yeah. what got me to get a record deal to Atlantic. And let me tell you, anybody out there getting a record deal is not easy that, yeah. you know, you they could say they were handing them out, but it's less than one percent. It's like becoming a major league baseball player yeah. or an NFL player. I mean, I did it. I mean, I could show you right. I don't know if you can see this. This right here. Wow. That's a records that's yeah. what led zeppelin dc yeah. you know what I mean? so people could say whatever they want to say i i did it you know what i mean yeah. and i and i actually made a ton of money you know yeah. that, that helped get my start in life you know i didn't yeah. blow my money i was yeah. able to do stuff like most guys went and blew it and didn't have anything to deal with it so sh sure maybe i didn't make it as a rock star but I'm living like a rock star right now. Yeah. You know, I'm literally living like a rock star. I'm living in a, I got a 25 acre farm. I have a beautiful wife for 35 years. I'm a grandpa. I'm retired. I, I retired yeah. when I was 55 years old. And wow. I'm not chasing the dog. So, I mean, I have a wonderful life. And, um, and that was just, that was part of my life. But if people still, that's what I was going to say too. People still talk crap. Like, like with Odin, say Odin's going to play a gig next year, or we played a gig. You'll look at YouTube comments, which I don't do anymore. And people will be like, I wish that guy killed himself or oh. they're still, they're still trying to make it. It's like, we're, we're trying to make it. I'm 60 years old. Okay. I'm not trying to make it. I'm just a guy out there having fun playing with a bunch of guys that I played yeah. with 40 yeah. years ago. It's like, yeah, people are so weird. Yeah. You know, I mean, I know I'm a food loop, but people are bizarre. It's like, you yeah. think that these guys played 40 years ago that are up there playing some club with three or 400 people are trying, trying to make, is that really yeah. what you think? But I mean, yeah. that's the kind of people that we're dealing with on the internet yeah. that are just absolute haters. And yeah. most of them probably still are bitter at me because I took their girlfriend away from them, you know, 40 years ago or, or whatever. I mean, <laughs> yeah. really, I can't, I can't yeah. think about like, yeah. why was there so much hate towards Odin? There's always negative. Somebody it's probably, it's probably that guy you're talking about, Stevie Rochelle. You know what uh, I mean? There's, there's the trolls. Like, yeah. I, I deal yeah, with, trolls. I deal with them all the time. I got people going, it's Here. a weird I got people saying, take off your wig. And I'm like, dude, it's not a friggin' wig. You know, I can't it's help like, it. I can't help it that I got hair, man. I mean, it, it's got nice hair. It, it's just part of <laughs> it's part of life, you know. But the it's these script, it, you do have to deal with these this stuff. And but it shouldn't be coming from people like us that have been there and done it. And I just felt like in that moment, and I did a I did a review of that documentary, and I called out Steve okay. Rochelle, and I said, "Hey, man, you know there there's no need to 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 put you know to throw shade at him." And the reality is, if you're still alive, you made it. Well, yeah, and the other thing is, as far as singing goes, there's no comparison between me and him. And as far as Odin and his band, there's no no comparison to pair what Odin did and what Odin was and where we were at. Sure, he came in and maybe I have no idea if his band was big or not. I, I honestly couldn't tell you. I've seen their I've seen him stuff, but I he was after us. Yeah. And there's there's you he cannot even be compared to what Odin did. Most of those bands can't. And I'm not trying to, you know, you know, be greater than anybody, but Odin was there in the beginning, like I said, that whole first wave. We were, we were we were our uh 
we were like a foundation, you know, yeah. and a lot of these bands, whether they admit it or not, you asked my cousin, Jerry, they, they, we were, we helped put it this way. You remember the band called city kid. Yep. They opened for, you know who, who they ended up being no. Tesla. Wow. No, they were Tesla. So, I mean, we had, we were wow. like, those are the kind of bands opening for us. So like we go way back. So the, like, tough to me whatever if he wants to talk about me what what that's just too bad i mean the guy's yeah. probably 50 60 years old and he's gonna yeah. you know that's issues with me yeah you know? i don't i don't Forget get it, it. i don't have get fun it and and, you know yeah have fun and have a good life yeah just have fun and have a good life and that's look that's the whole thing with you guys doing gigs i think it's awesome that Odin goes and plays shows. I, I, you know, you guys are all still alive. That's that's the we're all still alive and all original members. You know, yeah. and Which and is crazy and tough. I was friends with Jorge, who was the guitar player, and nobody seems to know where he even is. I mean, it's like, huh. you know, it's like people disappeared from back in those days. But you guys, yeah. Back, and look, I, I I went back and I listened to you guys stuff and. First of all, you got you guys had a great drummer. You had a great guitar player. You know, you sing your music. Ass, right? You know that first that first, that first record, that first "Don't Take No" for for an answer record was a phenomenal record. It really was a the way that we did it. You know, it's a bunch of teenagers. We we're all teenagers, and um, I mean that that record was on green world records too. And I mean, I don't know if you could do the, do the history on it, but so that record was out that first Motley Crue record came out and um, that poison record and that record sold incredible amounts. We'll never know because we got completely screwed on that. But I mean, it was right up there and people go, yeah, right. With that Motley Crue record. I mean, it was selling like wow. mad, you know I mean? Wow. And we were, we were becoming very, I mean, at one point there was like a million dollars invested into us. I mean, wow. we had, we were had a huge warehouse down, but the thing about it was we had management that was controlling it all and we weren't seeing any of it. We had all this stuff, had this, I remember had this mobile studio out back and had wow. this huge freaking place, all the blow and, you know, every, everything like a rock star, but we're living in some little shabby, you know, piece of crap rented house and yeah. you know what i mean they're living mahog but you yeah. at that age you're just like do 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 we're gonna yeah gonna go with motorhead oh no we're gonna go with the you know what i mean and it's um so and then here here's one story too i don't know how much time you have I keep you have let's, time let's keep rolling okay so this there's this is one so we were so we were after that don't take no so rat rats manager which was uh marshall burrow so yep. melton burrow was the actor right yep. Mar Mar marshall burrow was his brother so he so at one point and this is like odin was like sh stuff was happening for us like we were doing all these videos we 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 were you know we had um got on tour our records were selling our shirts were selling things we like we were, it was like right there and then he, so he comes, to, so he wants to interview us and, and, um, and he sits us down and we're down in like by Capitol Records in some building. And I'll never forget this. And he says, I want to manage you guys. He goes, you know, Warren knows who you are. And, um, and, um, and I think you guys are going to be, you know, I think you're, I think we, you have what it takes, you know, and I'm sitting in there and I'm like, fucking A, man, and we got to do this. Like yeah. we got to do this. But the pro the problem there, and and um, and I hope Jeff and Sean don't see this; it might make them upset. Is their dad was managing with this uh, this money the money guy, so their father was managing, and um and he had supposedly had a contract with us. But I just remember like thinking like, what the hell are we doing, man? This is our opportunity, you know. Uh, and, we're, and in my mind, I'm like, we're letting, we're letting this slip by, like. This guy knows exactly what to do. You know, he's doing rat and rat was huge. I mean, that round and round record was that it was just like, I'm just like, and that I think right there, that just put a kibosh to, yeah. to everything. Because after that, it just seemed like everything kind of went limbo. We kind of had a deal with like RCA or JVC was like RCA and JVC I think JVC was Japan. And then we, we had started making this record 
And it just seemed like it took forever and dragged on. And then, you know, pretty much what I told you that I ended up leaving the band. But that one story, I mean, that was kind of like a make or break, you know, deal. Oh, and I, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll never. Yeah, it just kind of. Yeah. Mo there's and, Yeah. And you have those moments, you know. Yeah. It's all timing. But, um, you know, it's timing, right? It's, all timing. it's timing and, you know. So now you gotta be who you are, too. I want to talk about what music you're doing. Now, I saw uh, you've got a, a video, music video you put out maybe, I don't know, six or seven months ago or something like that. It's a new yeah. direction. You've got, you know, beautiful yeah. footage on the farm. And and I'm like, yeah. Dude, oh, yeah. I was like, man, why didn't I know this guy was there? I, dude, I, I, got, I got platinum plaques from mm -hmm. Play on Country Records. I should have, like, Hard oh stuff with with this dude, you know. But well, tell, him, tell him about well, that. We could play. We, 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 I'll get you. To, I'll get you to play on one of my tracks. So so what happened? Uh, so you you know Roger, of course. Yeah. Roger, who's I knew from back at Lost Boys with Jimmy. He actually played drums with us for a while. Yeah. So I had these demos over like the last say thirty years. You know, songs that I didn't do. Some stuff that I wanted to redo from the Lost Boys records. So I got hooked up with Roger and, you know, Roger knows every freaking yeah. rock star in the business. It yeah. seems yeah. like, so he hooked me up with this and that, which is actually, he's become a friend of mine, which is amazing. I just talked to him the other day. It's like amazing. Like a guy who's so successful, like plays with Elton John, he's on, with Ario and so talented him and his brother. Like I, like I can text him and he'll get back to me and wow. it, it, you know, just good people out there yeah. that are musicians that like really care about music and yeah. you know, that's the most important thing to him. So, so, so to get back to it. So I made a record, I took all my, like a lot of demo stuff I had and Roger helped me put it together. He played drums on it. Uh, Matt Bissonette played bass. Will Hollis from the Eagles played keyboards. Wow. Uh, Roger played drums. And then Toshi from, I don't know how to say Toshi's last name, but he's from the Jimmy Kimball show. Yeah, yeah. Killer guitar player. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he, like, they, those go into the studios and it's like one or two takes and your yeah. stuff is done perfectly. Yeah. You know, write it down and it's just like, boom, like you've never, you know, so then they, yeah. so they laid all the tracks and then I, I kind of got that out of my system made some videos as you can see on youtube and um and once again i'm not doing it to be a rock star i do it yeah. because i love music it's in I'm your passionate heart about it. it's yeah. in, i will never leave me i mean i listen to music still and my hair sticks up you know and um and i do every day i put it on my truck i'm i'm, I'm a musician but i love music and um and uh so recently though i just now finished a single that's kind of like uh, Johnny Cash, Glenn Campbell vibe with Roger and, and Matt. And um, and I'm, I, so I'm actually having this guy, he's mixing it right now. And then I'm going to shoot a video out here. And I just I just keep doing it because I love music. I'm not I'm not trying to, you know, be a star, obviously. But if I don't mu to do music, my soul, I just die inside. Yeah. yeah. And so I have to be creative. So it's a, it's a way for me to be creative. And then I, I you know, like Roger's giving me some drum lessons, but I originally started off on the drums and, and, um, and then ended up becoming a singer or trying to be a singer. So I, so I'm very passionate about dr playing drums now. Yeah. Like I'm doing all my rudiments, wow. strokes, double strokes, triple strokes, paradiddle. Wow. So like, I'm, it's like, it, it's, uh, you know, I'm trying to become a good drummer yeah. and I think I suck still, but I could see that getting better but i'm um, so i mean that's 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 kind of in a nutshell you know and um i'm going to release this uh a video coming out and it's actually going to be done by it's going to look really professional like the other ones i've done are kind of all on my iphone and have my yeah. son or daughter shoot them but i really think this song is um it's a really good song it's everybody's told me it's a really good song and it's you know, it's not heavy metal, but it's, I want to, you know, it has a steel guitar in it. So it's, it's, it has wow. very good lyrics because a lot of my songs tell stories and um, I think it's going to be beautiful. And, you know, I don't know how to get it out there, but who knows, maybe I'll, it'll go viral. This, this maybe is where, <laughs> this is where we get it out. Now, can you tell us the title of the song? So it's called Shine Like Gold. Okay. Shine Like Gold. Yeah, it's basically a story about my grandpa when I was growing up he was pretty much the person that was there for me and 
and gave me some some like positive light because as a child i you know not everybody has their problems but i had a pretty shitty childhood you know wasn't the best no uh, my grandpa would hurt go ahead so it'll be on spotify you know spotify then i have my youtube channel which is you know if you look up randy o roberg uh i mean i i don't know like my son does all that. So if I can maybe text you the, the information and then maybe you could. Uh, I'll put, put it, it in on the your description. Yes. Okay. I'll yeah. put so all that, that stuff. That'll help me. Yeah. I'll put all that stuff. And when but, this but single it, comes it, out, we can we can do another thing and we'll, we'll you know, push awesome. the single. Yeah. And I don't know how many people watch this, but like, say like that guy, Tough, or any of these people, any of these band members that have talked about me over the years or have issues with me. Like I have no issues with anybody. I love everybody. I don't want anybody. I want everybody to do good. You know, and all these bands that are out there playing and struggling, I want them to do good and have a good living. And, you know, I don't want anybody to hurt them or any bad to come of anybody. And I'm, I, I'm totally positive and, and, um, and I'm, I'm, you know, grateful for what I got to do do in this industry and i'm grateful for my little footprint that i left and you know i just want i just want it to be positive i don't want to i don't want to come across negative you know and I'm, yeah. I'm wishing everybody well you know yeah pretty much that that's that's awesome and I'll, if anybody wants me to sing on their tracks i'm available i actually i actually sang on a couple metal records wow. it's so cool now because people they can send you their mp3 oh yeah like i i've done like two you know, I've never heard, I, I hear what I do and I send it to them. I don't know what they do with it, but they'll say, can you write me words and sing some melodies? So it's it's cool how you can do that now at home. You can just record right at your home, you know? And Anyways, enough of me. You, do you have a email address in your YouTube channel description? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I do. Okay. Because <laughs> I, I, I that, honestly hey. don't know. That is that is a good thing. If anybody wants to get Randy O to sing on their tracks, you can you can oh, either, okay. you can either go to your page or you can email me and I'll pass you on to Randy. Okay. Uh, because man, you've got a great voice and and yeah. it's an amazing story. Thank you. It's an amazing story. And it's and like you said, this is a positive thing. You don't mean any yeah, I want to I don't mean any ill will in telling people the no realities way. of the music business. It just no. is oh. what it is. But when you realize that it is a facade and it is a yeah. myth, it's not real yeah. life. And no. so that is why this this is probably the best interview I have done yet. And really? I yes, and I would say Thank that. You. You know, we're guaranteed at least a thousand people out the gate, probably the first day. So, it, really? It, yes. Because my channel, look, dude, I had a channel for 14 years and never took it serious. Right. And then in, yeah. De in December, yeah. I just said, man, I am going to just boom. And I go every day. I put out a new video every day, sometimes two videos a day. And I talk about Good the business and I do all this stuff. And I build it up now to where I've got 7,000 followers, about close to 7,000. Nice. And I've had videos Good that have been 100,000 100, views on some videos. So, man, this might even be something that we transition for you because this is, you know, now I start to see people go back and listen to my old albums and stuff because they're finding these, <laughs> these stories. So this is the way forward for you to well, no. you know, help promote well, what it, you're doing. Well, it's a trip too. like just YouTube in general. It's like how, if you're willing to grind, like I, so I started a YouTube channel. I don't know how long, long ago it was, you know, probably fact check me, whatever. I don't know, but I got serious like three years ago because my kids kept starting YouTube channels and quitting. And I read this book 10 X by Grant Cardone, you know, how to 10 X your life. Yeah. And basically it's like you're saying you got to just keep grinding, like whatever you're doing, do it 10 times harder. So I go, you know what? I'm going to show them that this 60 year old man could get three, get a thousand followers yeah. and that you could get monetized. And I, it took me three years to do it, but I mean, whatever. I now have 1200 subscribers yeah. and that, you know, to me, that's an accomplishment, but I it could is. see how you like what you're doing. 
you if you just got to keep grinding and every day. shorts and you and you will you will be successful and and you just set your goals and you go for it and you believe in yourself and i think that's that's how it is with anything in life and you and you know what you kind of give me the vibe of it's like a gym lad yeah remember jim lad yeah 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 <laughs> He's a, so, so be, take that as a compliment you yeah. know what i mean so you yeah. have you can do it yeah You're doing it but i mean you got you have the voice and everything to do real well i think you you uh, have an incredible story and you know what you well, can thank you. you could do the same thing i'm doing all i do is i get up at five in the morning and i hit record yeah. on the phone and i go uh, I went to the rainbow one night and this happened and I, and I tell 15 oh, really? minutes, and I say fifth, a 15 minute increment. And then I, and then I upload it and, and, and I get up every, I put a new video out at 8 AM every morning. And then I'm on there with the people and I chat with them and we call it the breakfast club. And it's all these old guitar players and, and musicians oh, really? and it's built up because here, dude, there's more people like us. Then there are the oh, yeah. Cruz and the Rolling Stones. We are oh, the majority. Sure. We are the guys that yeah. tried. We are the guys that get yeah. up every day and work and bust our bust our yeah. ass to provide for our families. And that yeah. is a much greater net that we can capture well, yeah. and pull people in. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So are you are you putting are you still looks like you got some guitars back there? Looks like you got an SG oh, yeah. or some kind of I, Gibson, got, the SG or Les Paul? I got uh, I got about thirty guitars. There. Oh, okay. yeah. So are you are you jamming on them? Oh, that's oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. Oh, it's I, um, I I played I toured with an artist named Colt Ford. I played on okay. about three or four albums. He wrote uh, the song "Dirt Road Anthem" for Jason Aldean. So we were opening for Keith Urban. We were opening for Florida Georgia Line. We were opening for Jake Owen, all of those country acts. And um, it, it, and the, here's the thing. The whole time I knew, man, I was on the Sunset Strip. And I was, <laughs> and, 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 and what the thing is, when they threw me out there on that big stage, I just reverted back to what I was doing 30 years ago and went for the big stadium power chords and the, you know, and the, and the Duada Dita and the, and the harmonics, dude, I would open the show with oh, yeah. five bombs and, and all of that stuff, because I'm like, Hey, that's what I wanted to hear when I, when I saw a band, you know, well, so well, it, it's, you, I'm, what's that? I'm sure you're something. Else. I'm sure you're something else. If, if because I know how good Roger is, and all his cats are just like top notch guys. He is. He is. And a thanks bad... to Roger too. If you watch, give Roger some credit, man. That's one thing with him too. I, I don't know if you have you interviewed him. Yes, he was the because first. people like so people people are out there like me that say you don't have a band. You go to his, you go look up Doghouse Studios, and if you even have demo ideas, he will. He'll help you put put a whole project together with the yes. best musicians in. The yes, and you can have your lyrics, your melodies, and he'll literally help you put this all together. So I mean, give him a plug because he, yes. that's what I told him. I go, your market. There's people like me that have songs or have demos, but they don't have, or they have some musicians that aren't top notch. You, you, they can go to your studio and you'll come out with an incredible product. You know, yes. like yes. I mean, he's done with me multiple times, and it's. I, I th I'm very grateful for him, and I want to give him, you know, a yeah. nice little shout out. He he is incredible, and we actually went back and recorded some of the old shock stuff. Oh, are you? Oh, oh I so was, was I going to sing on your guys' stuff? I don't was know. It, so it, maybe because you, we had um, he reached out to me and said, "Hey, man, let's let's do some of the old songs," and so he sent me drum tracks. And I, I relearned my parts and, and tracked and added chains. Of course, you change things now because you you learn more, you know. Yeah. And um and and then when it came time to get everybody else, it was like they weren't active. They weren't like, you know, they didn't stick uh -huh. with it. So it was like kind of pulling teeth, and we're still waiting on our singer to actually. Well, then that's the band. You're the that's the band because you guys have some horns in your band. Yes. You guys have a 
We yeah, had horns. He said that he's waiting for the singer, and he said if the singer doesn't do it, I hope this doesn't blow it. He goes, I'll, my, I'll have you, I'll have you do the vocal tracks because I got to make sure the singer's not, you know, whatever. I go, yeah. well, I would love to do that. Dude, so we'll it, see. That'd be cool. It sounds really good. That the drums and the the guitar, it it sounds killer. It's kind of Van Halen esque, you know, kind of stuff. Yeah. But um, man, that would be incredible. This is this is we, you know, and this should be a little kick in the butt to the singer because I've been pulling yeah. teeth, going, dude, get come on, get in there. I, we, you know, I even lowered the keys. You know, I said, look, I know we're older. <laughs> and so I, I tuned everything down, yeah. you know, I'm like. Step down. Uh, no, dude, I, I think I went down like two steps. Oh, yeah. So it's. Oh, like, really? How do you yeah. do that? Well, I just <laughs> put heavier strings on there and just jacked it oh, way I down. So it should be, ah. easy, you know, to do. But, um, man, that, that, yeah, would well, be, that would be super cool. That would be super cool. I would love to do it. I would do it in a heartbeat. Awesome. See, I sing all the time. Not stop. I'm constantly. You hear how I'm talking. I'm always singing. I've got Super Tramp going on. I got Old Sticks, Grand Illusion going on. I got uh, Steve Miller Band. I mean, those are what I'm singing to all the time. Wow! Anyway, wow! Th thank you for taking the time out and interviewing Dude. me, man. Dude, thank Thankful you. For people like I, you. I, I feel like I have a new friend, and that is, that hey, is anytime. Dude, so, well, so here's the deal. I'm going to put links to your stuff. Um, and okay. I'm going to debut this video probably this Sunday morning on my channel. I will send you tomorrow, a tomorrow morning okay. at 8 a.m. And if you're okay. up, if you're up and you want to join us, join us in the chat. There's a little chat on the side oh, of okay. YouTube. Okay. And say okay. hi to everybody because I'm, I've told people that this is coming up. And they are going to absolutely love this. And if we make this video go, psh, dude, it's going to okay. be a great promotion for your music. Okay. And then I saw, so can I just text you like Instagram and my YouTube and all that when my son yeah. gets on? Yeah. Not okay. a problem, bro. I'll take care of it. Right. Thank you so much, dude. Thank you me. rock. Thank you, man. And hey, God I will, bless you, brother. Bless you, brother. Thank you. Have a great all right. day. All right. Bye. All right. Thanks, man.